Hi guys, Ben here. Now in this video I want to discuss with you what I class as a vital piece of equipment on the reef tank. It's not the flashiest, it's not the most expensive, it's not something you're going to show off to your mates on Instagram about, but it is fundamentally a vital piece of equipment and I wouldn't run a tank without one. And that is a battery backup. Now in this video I'm going to discuss what a battery backup is, why you need one, what it does, and then later in the video I'm also going to show you how I've implemented one on the Shroom Lagoon over there and how I've built my own to run either a Red Sea Wave, uh, AI Nero 3 or 5, the DC Mighty Jet return pump I'm using, and I'm pretty sure, I haven't actually tested, but I'm pretty sure it would run your, your J-Bow return pumps and power heads as well. So before we jump into that, I just want to say a massive, massive heartfelt thank you to all the subscribers. I'm completely, genuinely blown away by the support I've had from this channel and I've got over 100 subscribers already and it really does mean a lot to me. I never thought in a million years when I started doing this channel I'd end up with 20 people following me, never mind 100 already and videos with 2,000 likes it's, and 2,000 views. It's just, it's, you know, it's blowing my brains to be honest. So if you subscribe, thanks a lot. Keep it up. Thanks for your comments. Keep the comments coming, good, bad, thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't mind the thumbs down, you know, keep them coming as well. But if you are going to give me a thumbs down, please let me know why, what's wrong with it, how can I improve it. You know, I'm new to all this making video, so if you've got any advice, brilliant. So, right, with that out of the way, let's jump into the topic of battery backups. So, what is a battery backup and why do you need one? Essentially, it's a very simple piece of equipment, either one or two batteries connected up with a small control unit that in the event of a power outage is going to carry on supplying power to a power head or return pump to keep the water circulating in your aquarium. Now, why do you need one? Well, in the event of a power outage, the first thing that happens is bang, everything's gone, no light, no water flow, no heat. Now, the light going out, not really an issue, short term anyway, you know, a day or two, even the corals of fish will be fine. Heater, you know, over a long period of time, but large volumes of water like this, the houses are relatively warm. The temperature's not gonna drop too fast. Your first concern and major concern is the oxygen levels. Now, what happens with zero flow, either in an all-in-one just around the display or in a tank like this behind me, like this Red Sea Reef, or between the display and the sump, you've got no water movement. No water movement means no gaseous exchange on the top. It means no CO2 going out, no oxygen coming back in. Now effectively what's going to happen, your fish will carry on swimming around, they're breathing, they're doing the thing, bacteria in the tank is consuming oxygen to do its job, and then it, the oxygen levels just deplete, 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 deplete. Now the first to succumb to this will be your large fish, they've obviously got a higher oxygen demand. Now what will happen, the first large fish will succumb to the lack of oxygen and die. That you've now got a dying fish on the bottom of the sand somewhere, it's dying, it's decomposing, it's releasing ammonia, you know, you've got a snowball effect, your next fish dies and so on and so on and so on. And before you know it, the later the last fish to go, not only are they dealing with a lack of oxygen, but rising ammonia levels, you've got no water circulating at all, none through your filter media, you're on the verge of a tank crash. So what do we do to prevent this? Well, that's where the battery backups come in. So what are your options for a battery backup? Well, first off, you've got the off the shelf options from two big suppliers. Now, the Red Sea Reef 250 behind me, I use two MP40s. Those are connected up to the Ecotec battery backup. It's a solid option. If you've already got the MP series pumps or the return, it'll run the return pumps as well. It's a great option. It's off the shelf, just plug and play, take out the box, plug everything in, plug it, and it'll do everything for you. In the event of a power outage, it switches whichever power head you've got from whatever mode you run into, constant mode and half speed. So I've got it connected up to this one here, and what it'll actually do, it'll stop from the gyre mode it's in, it'll switch it to constant mode, it'll run about 40% power, and I've actually tested it, it runs well over 24 hours, so that's, that's perfect. To me, that's your safety window. If you've got a battery backup that'll run a power head or return pump, keep circulation, between 24 and 36 hours, that's your goal. Now, you know, you could, there is options to get more power and longer run times, but you know, if effectively, if your power's off for more than 24, 36 hours, you've got some major problems anyway. So the other option, if you run the Toomsy pumps, they do a really clever little device they call a safety connector. 
it's essentially a relay and some wiring again plug and play if you've already got a dc controllable power head from toonsy you buy the safety connector plug it in jobs are good now the good thing with the toonsy gives you the option it's not sent shipped with a battery so you get an option to use whichever battery you want so you can either go for or something along the lines of you know you could get a little small six to eight amp hour 12 volt battery it's going to run a small power head for two three hours or you can write up to your big deep cycle leisure batteries you know 100 amp hours it's going to run your power head for you know three four days effect you know effectively but as i said before if you've got that sort of power outage for that sort of length of time you know that that's running a power head is the least of your worries so again that 24 to 36 hour window if you can get a battery backup supply that's going to run that then that's it i think that's you know that's that's going to save your reef now where i am in the uk you know i've been in it we've lived in this house now for around six seven years we've had a handful of power cuts that none of them lasted much longer than three four hours maximum but the potentials there it could happen so you know just get yourself one if you haven't got a battery backup on your tank whether your tanks are 20 gallon nano to you know 100 120 five six foot long just get yourself a battery backup just one power head running connected to batteries that you know you've got that peace of mind in the event of a power outage you've got the oxygen you've got some water movement and you're just going to sleep better at night so just get it done now with that said I've been running the Shroom Lagoon now for eight weeks with no battery backup at all. And the reason why is I didn't want to use an MP10. The glass is borderline too thick, so I've been going up to an MP40. That's way overkill on that tank. You know, I'm running everything really low flow. It's only mushrooms. I don't want a great big MP40 on. Even running it the lowest thing, it's just not going to work. So the Ecotech was out. Now, I did look at getting a Toonsy 6040 like I run on the frag system. Now, the only option with that, the only, I suppose, bad thing with that, it's quite a chunk, it's a small pump, it's quite chunky, and I'm trying to keep the aesthetics of that tank as nice as possible. So I wanted the lowest profile pump I could get away with. Never used one of the AI Nero's before, and I saw the Nero 3, and it's perfect. The controllability, the programming's great, and it's exactly, exact dimensions I wanted. Sits perfectly in the tank, works great. The lowest speed, small pulsing perfect so that left me a bit of a dilemma i've got the return pump which is the dc mighty jet and the nero 3 power head that's my only sources of water movement now neither of those come with a battery backup option from the factory or even off the shelf from a third third party supplier so i've done a bit of digging i've done a bit of research and i've actually come up with a battery backup system which you can make yourself with off the shelf parts it's plug and play tiny bit of wiring nothing nothing that you know anybody can't do just for crimping connection if you can use a pair of scissors pliers and a screwdriver then you can build one of these yourself and the actual system i've come up with i've tested it now on my red sea waves i've tested it with the mighty jet dc return pump and the ai nero pumps and it works flawlessly i'm guessing i've not tried so i can't say with 100 percent certainty but i'm almost i'm you know, it's, as long as the connectors, or you can buy an adapter, which I'll show you later, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to run a JBO return pump or a small JBO power head as well. So it's a great option for people running all in one tanks. So I know the little DC 1200 series really popular with the water boxes and your Fluval Evo owners. So that could give you the possibility of backing up your little nano tank in the event of a power outage. So. Without further ado, we'll jump out to the Shroom Lagoon. I'll show you the setup. I'll talk you through it. I'll give you a quick demonstration of how it works, and then hopefully, you know, you've got the possibility you can copy me. You can have a look. You know, you might be able to improve on the system what I've done. But we'll jump out to the Shroom Lagoon now. I'll show you the setup, and then we'll go from there. Right, here she is. Let's just open up the cabinet, and I'll talk you through it. Now, before I go into any details, I just want to make one thing clear. I just want to put a little disclaimer out there. I'm not an electrician. If you're going to follow this, you're going to build one of these yourself. You're doing so at your own risk. There's not a huge risk involved, but you are messing with batteries and wiring and connecting them to you know potentially expensive pieces of equipment like your return pump and your power head. So if you do it, you're doing so at your own risk. If you're not happy and you haven't got the confidence to do it, just buy an off-the-shelf one. Get yourself the Vortex or the, the Toonsy one and set it up as per their instructions. But 
if you want to power one of these items and you want to build one of these let's just jump down and I'll show you how I've done it now here's the batteries now, first thing you're going to notice is there's two batteries now there's a reason for the two batteries and that's because both of these pumps that I want to power require a 24 volt input now obviously one battery is 12 volts if you connect one battery to these they're not going to work some pumps will run at half power but these don't I've tried it they just don't work so they do need the 24 volt input now we get around that by connecting two batteries together now I'll just talk to you a little bit about the batteries first now when you look at the batteries you've got your 12 volts there and your 17 amp hours now what that basically means is your, your voltage is the power your battery is going to put out your amp hours is the length of time it's going to put it out for so if you think of the amp hours as the battery capacity and basically the higher the amp hour numbers the longer it's going to run whatever you're connected to so you know 17 amp hours should last a good like good time yeah, you can get right up to 100 big batteries 100 amp hour batteries but for this application i've just used the two 17 amp hours now the batteries themselves i've used the uasa np series these are a battery specifically designed for standby applications like the like how we're going to use and the design for alarm boxes you know etc other similar things so basically they're quite happy they can be on float charge 24 hours a day it doesn't damage the batteries and they've also got very 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 minimal self-discharge so with nothing connected to them they'll hold a charge for a long long time without draining on their own you know they're a good solid battery i've used them in numerous things over the years i've actually run these on other systems i've built battery packs for other tanks with the same batteries never had any issues with them so good solid battery not the cheapest but not the most expensive either good solid battery it's one i'd recommend so let's have a look how i've connected them together now they're connected together here now this is called connecting two batteries in series what connecting a battery two battery packs in series does it doubles up your voltage but it keeps your amp hours the same so although we've got two batteries the capacity is still the same apart from we've doubled up the voltage so just recap connect them in series you go positive to negative and then we take the positive and negative output from the other side so that will give us a 24 volt battery pack but still only 17 amp hours now if you connect battery two batteries together in parallel that does the opposite it'll lead it'll leave you with 12 volts but it'll double up your amp hours but we haven't got to worry about that because for our application we need it in series we need 24 volts so that's how you do it positive from one side just a neg negative of the other one battery connecting lead that's all we need now you can buy these pre-made um, this is one I'd had from another project from something else so that's one I've used now one thing you'll notice with these batteries is there's no battery charger connected now there's a couple of ways we can charge these batteries and the first one is periodically once every two weeks if you're doing say doing a water change or maintenance on your tank connect a battery charger plug it in leave it till the batteries are topped up disconnect the charger take it away now perfectly acceptable way of doing it the only downside of that is if you have a power cut like the day before you're going to charge it up the batteries aren't going to be at the full capacity now to get round that we can connect a smart float charger up to this side leave it plugged in constantly that will monitor the batteries it'll keep them in top condition it'll keep them full capacity so in the event of a power cut you've got all of your 17 amp hours ready to power your power head so that's the way i'm that's the way i'd recommend to do it that's the optimal way and that's actually the way i'm going to do it but unfortunately i've ordered the charger it just hasn't appeared yet so i can't show you on the video now just one thing on the chargers you do want to, you are going to want to get yourself a 24 volt charger again we connected them up in series together you're going to charge them at the same time so you do need a 24 volt charger so i will put a link down as well to the charger i've brought unfortunately again i'm sorry guys i can't show it you but it's not here yet i might do an updated video when i show you it all actually plugged in all the wiring hidden in the charger connected so but until then that's how i do it so that's how we connect the batteries now from the batteries we need to make yourself two tails and now all that is is um, two lengths of wire obviously, obviously use black for negative red for positive just two short lengths of wire with a ring terminal crimped on the end these are the crimps you know you can get these sets off again off amazon or your local car spare shop or b and q i might stock them i'm guessing just a ring terminal 
crimped on the end. Now all you do is strip your wire, push it in there and then just get yourself a crimping tool which I've got somewhere to show you. You know, get cheap crimping tool. You can get these again, Amazon, car spares, loads of you know, screw fix anywhere like that. You know, you've got wire strippers on the bottom, cutters on the top, and then your different size crimps just to fasten it on. Now, I'm not going to go through all the how I've crimped them on and you know, use, show you boring using a screwdriver, etc. You know, I'm pretty sure you can work that out yourself. Uh, all I'm going to say is once you have crimped them on, just give them a quick tug like that, just make sure it's a solid connection, and then you're good to go. Now, that connects to this device is what i talked about earlier this is one of the toomsy safety connectors so it actually comes pre-wired with this block connector on the end so the only wiring we need to do is connect your positive there to your positive side of your block connector your negative there to your negative side of that that's it that's your wiring done two flat screws that's it that's all you need to do now from that that runs up to the safety connector it's this wire here that where it says the 12 and 24 volt battery that's your wire here. the connector at the top then that is where the power from your original pump that you want to run goes into this and then your wire at the bottom comes out and goes into your pump now I'll just put the camera on a small tripod here because I need two hands to show you the connectors sorry guys just bear with me a little bit right there we are just get that in position so so that's it connected to the battery you've got this so what we need to do then we need to take this side here and we need to plug this into the actual pump that we want to power now what happens here let's take the return pump for instance that won't fit into there and that's just simply because that's designed specifically for a Toonsy power head now the way around this is these DC connectors. It's just a little adapter. You know, these were three, about three, four quid on Amazon. So all that does, it just takes that size there and it lets us connect it into the pump there, fine. Now, the other side, so that's the original power for the Mighty Jet. That needs to connect then to the Toonsy safety connector again the connectors are slightly different so we need a different size here another dc jack connector that connects to that to the original power supply and then lets us plug that directly then into the toonsy safety connector that's it that's done that's everything done connected working fine I'll just pull it off the tripod again and i'll show you how it works so that's it guys that is all the wiring you need to do that's that is connected you've got a battery back up now that's fine i'll demonstrate that now if i can get it all in the shot you can see the display here on the mighty jet now the eight according to the instructions depending on it's not the actual setting it's running on whenever you up or take the settings up or down what it actually does it displays the wattage it's using now that's the on the lowest setting obviously i don't run a lot of flow on this tank so it's supposedly drawing eight watts now the power supplies this one with the green led so you imagine the event of a power cut, I'll flick the switch, you watch that, it'll drop down slightly as it switches over, but in the event of a power cut, power goes off, as you can see the wattage dropped straight back up to 8, so now we're running on batteries. And I've actually tested this, I ran it for over 20 hours, um, and it ran absolutely fine, never dropped, never missed a beat, so you know, I'm sure it would run longer, and there's always the option, you know, you could go to... 30 50 60 amp hour batteries and run it a lot longer but this setup has run at 20 hours i will test it for a long time one of the days but i didn't want to run the batteries completely flat and you know 20 hours is more as much as i want and then in, when the power comes back on it just flicks over you hear a little click on the relay on the toonsy safety connector and as you see nothing's missed a beat again i'll show you again power off straight back up so there we go so there you've got a 24 volt battery pack all plug and play batteries 40 pound each so we like 80 quid for the batteries so a tenner for the connectors power the tunty safety connector was about 45 quid so for if you've already got the mighty jet you've already got the nero you've already got the red sea pump for 150 pound you've got a plug and play battery backup that's going to run your pump over a day 
you know, no problems. So I will just show you if you want to see on the Nero. I'll just go up to the tank here. You can see the sorry about the blue lights, guys. I haven't got a filter, and you can see the Nero spinning there. What we'll do, we'll we'll unplug the Nero power supply. So now if we take it out of this, they just happen to be the same, exactly the same fittings. So if we do the same, plug it into the Nero. Nero is now working, as you can see. So we come under here, this is the plug for the Nero, vent of a power cut. Turn the power off to the Nero, the mains power. As you can see, it's not Mr. Beat, carried on. Still running the setting, pulsing up and down. So you can use it again on the Nero and the Mighty Jet. Now I've chosen to run the Mighty Jet on the um, battery backup, mainly because obviously the tank's an all-in-one. So in the event of a power outage, the return pump's going to stop. Yeah, you know, I'm going to get no water flow. There's a big ch rear chamber on this tank, so I'm going to have a lot of the rear chamber is going to be stagnant water, not moving. So I've decided I wanted to set it up on the mighty on the return pumps in the event of a power outage It's still circulating water through the tank, but also through any filter media in your rear chambers Now as I mentioned earlier, I haven't tried this but I'm I'm pretty sure the mighty jet uses exactly the same connections and almost the same controller as the Jbo pumps so if you are running a Jbo return pump the DC 1200s etc especially on like the Evos are really popular in the water boxes you know you've then got a you know a perfect battery backup it's going to run your whole tank it's going to run the rear chamber it's going to keep water circulating through your filter media it's going to be splashing the surface from coming out of your return so a really good option or if you want you can just run it on the the nero or another power head so you can see it's still running on the battery still spinning works really well so there you have it guys you know it's a pretty simple setup really so plug and play i will put links down below to the size of the connectors the actual pin sizes in the dc jacks the toonzy uses a 5.5 by 2.5 and the other jacks are 5.5 by 2.1 and what you actually need is you need two and you need the opposite you need a 5.5 to 2.1 and then you need and then you need a 2.1 to 2.5 but i will put the links down below to the connectors that i've used and again those around three pound on amazon so not expensive so there you go guys that's the setup so you know as you can see i've demonstrated it works really well you know no issues obviously i'm going to i'll tidy all the wiring up at some point i just wanted to leave it out for the purposes of making the video so there you have it so I hope you enjoyed this video, a bit different to the normal, but I hope you've found it, you know, vaguely entertaining and a bit educational. And I hope this helps you build something like this and potentially saves your reef in the event of a power outage. So again, guys, thanks for watching. You know, keep subscribing, keep giving me the thumbs up, and I suppose I should say smash that like button, you know, smash the bell icon for the notifications. Thanks again guys, happy reefing.